Hey friends, Amanda here at Bare Bones Living and welcome back to the coop. I just came out here to check on Mike's new craftsmanship and I realized I have not given you guys an update on our peeps in a while. Hi peeps. So we moved them onto new ground yesterday and they loved having the fresh grass. That was the first move that they've had. And then today, oh, good job. <laughs> today Mike put in these roost bars that you see Hollywood standing on here. Isn't he magnificent? getting so big. I don't know if you can see his coloring. Oh, you can a little bit. Look at how pretty he is. You can be such a big boy. Yeah. And Rick is back there with the guineas. <clears throat> but I came out to check the roost bars that Mike just put in. And they look pretty cool. He put this one across the back here. And then this one down the side here where Hollywood is standing. As you can see, it's a nice little roost situation for them. Look at his colors. Can you see his colors? Yeah. Yeah, pretty bird, yeah. Hey, there's Rick. You want to come up here and get your debut here too, Rick? Show off your beautiful colors. So I just came out here to check on Mike's craftsmanship here. Uh, he just did this today and I hadn't seen it yet. We had been talking about uh, putting up roost bars for a little while now because they're older. They are now 12 weeks old. Our one guinea, sorry for the guinea chorus. Our one guinea is 13 weeks old. Everybody else is 12 weeks old. And in the past, all they have been sleeping on is straw bales. We got two straw bales. We had two straw bales. And as you can see, Rick, isn't he beautiful? What are you guys doing? Pecking at my feet. Um, <clears throat> they had been crowding together on the two straw bales. Between the two straw bales, there was enough space for all of them. But now they're getting bigger. And we lost one of our straw bales when we moved them yesterday. The string fell off. And so we just packaged that up. What are you doing? Look at, look at, look at these. Look at, come on, really? What are you doing? Rick, what are they doing? Um, <laughs> so we lost one of the straw bales. Uh, so we definitely needed a place for them to be sleeping. And as you can see, they are all getting used to sitting up here, and they have a nice, dry place to sleep now. Um, everybody weathered this uh, polar vortex well. Doesn't look like anybody has any frostbite or injuries or anything like that. Everyone stayed dry. Um... I was out here every day checking on them. Stop checking my butt, please. But I think they turned out really well. What do you think? What do you think, Rick? Let's see. Can we get good pictures of Rick here? Can my camera focus? He's real pretty, too. I stopped wearing my ring in here because they kept pecking at it. He's a pretty boy. I had a bunch of chickens sitting under my butt. Look at them. Come on. Am I that warm? 
Do you need the warmth? I don't know. I'm not your mother hen. <laughs> uh, our next project is to put nest boxes in here because these red stars, we got two of them, are the uh, sex length or X length chickens and they can start laying at 16 weeks. So we got to start uh, preparing for possibly having some eggs, which would be a welcome sight for us because our big girls have not given us any, I think we've gotten two eggs in the past two months. Um, and we'd really like to get these chickens out in the chicken yard. Um, but we're trying to figure out how best to do that. And I'm actually going to get out of this area now and let them relax and eat. And maybe they'll stop squawking. And as you can see... The girls, the big girls, are loving the, where the peeps used to be because they're pecking through and eating all the crumble or grower feed that was in there. And there's lots of good vittles left in here. Is that good, girls? They could probably use a little bit of extra protein anyway. We haven't really been giving them any extra protein. So as I mentioned, we've been kind of going over how we're going to introduce these peeps to the girls. We want these girls, our big girls, to become part of this flock. Um, <clears throat> and we really want these guineas that we got to have a flock mentality and stay with this whole flock. We know that guineas are, you know, just wild by nature and they can fly very well and they like to go out and scavenge for bugs and things like that, which we're cool with and that, that's one of the reasons why we got them because we do want them to get ticks and bugs and all the things, but we want them to always come home. Um, we don't want them to get eaten by predators or lost or whatever. Um, so we're trying to figure out, we've been watching some things and saw that it's best, a, a good way to try to train your guineas is by letting one guinea out. That way that guinea goes out but doesn't like go far away uh, because guineas also have like a pack mentality and all all of the guineas friends are still in the coop <clears throat> so it'll stay close and we'll let it that one out and get used to being out in the chicken yard and get used to the other girls and things like that but we wouldn't be able to let that guinea back in safely like I don't want to have to try to wrangle a guinea every night to get it back into the coop because we're not ready to let the peeps out yet. Um, and they probably could be together at this point. They're large enough. I think that the roosters could probably hold their own. We were, were a little worried about our, um, our bard, our bard rock Esmeralda is kind of brutal and we didn't want her bullying our roosters and making them wimps um, but I think we're probably past that point but we also want we don't want our big girls eating all their all their grower feed because they still need to be on that until the end of January um, And we don't want the peeps eating the layer feed yet. So because of that, we're just going to keep them separated 
and what we've decided to do instead is we just bought another uh, electric fence because we know we're going to need it anyway come spring. Um, so that's supposed to come this week and then we can keep, we'll keep the big girls in here, set up another chicken yard next to this one with the same energizer and everything. And then we'll put the peeps in that other yard so that we can let them out so that they can get fresh grass and move around and, you know, get used to doing the foraging thing and stuff like that. So I think that's what we're going to do. And then once they're 16 weeks, then we'll do like the overnight. We're eventually like the, this coop that the pe that the big girls are in right now, the red A-frame is totally falling apart and dry rotted and <clears throat> Mike was saying it's basically held together by chicken poop right now. <laughs> uh, so they're going to be moved into this Siskovich chicken tractor at night when the peeps are 16 weeks. All those guineas. Um, so that's the plan now and the, the, the roost bars are in, so that's cool. I'm excited about that. Nest boxes are to come in the next couple of weeks. And that is the update on our peeps. Thank you guys for stopping by, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you guys for stopping by today and joining in on our journey here at Burbones Living. We'll catch you on the next one.